Postpartum hemorrhage is the topic, and we will abbreviate it PPH. And postpartum hemorrhage is a rather unfortunate consequence uh, that can occur um, involving massive uh, bleeding after delivery. And the first thing I wanted to talk about with postpartum hemorrhage is the cause or etiology. The etiology of postpartum hemorrhage can be described as the four T's, where each of these T's represent one cause. And the first one is known as uterine atony. And what uterine atony essentially is, is describing um, a condition in which the strength of the uterine muscle has been lost. And what that does is it causes a failure of the contraction and retraction of the uterus. Now, most commonly uterine atony is the consequence of over distension, a, a, uterine, a uterus that has been over distended. And the reasons include uh, fetal macrosomia, very large baby, and uh, multi-fetal gestation. So twins, triplets, things like that. So this is by far the most common reason a woman can develop postpartum hemorrhage, uterine atony. The next T is tissue. And what that implies essentially is a condition in which the placenta has not properly been expelled after uh, delivery, so retention of placenta. The third T is trauma, any type of lacerations that can occur uh, during the delivery procedure or anything dramatic such as uterine rupture. And then the fourth and final T is thrombosis. And what thrombosis is referring to is any type of bleeding, bleeding disorder. Um, for example, thrombocytopenia, low platelet count that can contribute or exacerbate bleeding. I want to talk about now the pathophysiology of why this actually uh, occurs or how it's occurring. Well, basically, at term, the blood flow to the uterus is actually pretty uh, significant. A lot of the cardiac uh, output goes to the uterus as much as 500 to 800 milliliters per minute. And this is pretty dramatic. And normally what happens after delivery is that the uterine muscle or the uterine muscle fibers normally contract. They contract and they retract. Retract meaning they shorten. And this leads essentially to the uterine blood vessels being compressed. And once this happens, the blood flow is quickly occluded. So that basically means when this happens, the blood flow is quickly occluded. And that's important. So this is what happens normally. Now in a situation of uterine atony, which essentially is a failure of the contraction and retraction these uterine muscle fibers are unable to contract and retract so you don't get the blood vessels being compressed or occluded and that contributes to bleeding. So how does a woman present? Most commonly uh, it would be a pretty dramatic episode of heavy vaginal bleeding and obviously after delivery of uh, the baby and the woman will also have some signs of hypovolemia, hypovolemia or hypovolemic shock. Uh, she also may have symptoms of being dizzy, lightheaded, etc. So, if you do have a scenario like this, how would you proceed immediately? And because it's such an urgent uh, occurrence, that 
The diagnosis is really limited to physical exam. Once the patient stabilizes, of course, you will proceed with more diagnostic testing. But initially what you do is you palpate the uterus. And what you're really feeling for is a boggy uterus. And what that means is a uterus that feels ba basically kind of spongy or flaccid. Essentially, what you're trying to feel for is a uterus that has reduced muscle tone. And uh, that's a hallmark sign of postpartum hemorrhage. Of course, uh, there's going to be vaginal bleeding. Uh, in addition to having a uterus that has reduced muscle tone, the uterus also, uh, what you're looking for is increased size. That's also a very important diagnostic finding once you, once you palpate. In addition to palpating the uterus, if uh, the condition involves a, a failure of expulsion of the placenta, you also want to manually explore and remove the placenta immediately. So let's now talk about the treatment management. Well the very first thing you want to do is you want to maintain hemostasis. And since the most common cause of postpartum hemorrhage is uterine atony, this is fortunately done by doing a bimanual massage. And what this does is that it actually helps the uterine to contract. So that's a very important initial first step before you get into any of the medications or other uh, uh, procedures. Now let's break the treatment down into two categories, or three categories. What would you do if it was because of tone? What would you do if it was because of tissue? And what would you do if it was because of trauma? Now if it was because of tone, what that means is that there was a situation involving uterine atony. You can actually increase the um, muscle tone of the uterus by giving these medications known as uterotonics and these uterotonics there's uh, three in particular I wanted to mention the first one is oxytocin second one is methyl ergonavine and the third one is a prostaglandin known as misoprostol and these two can be given um, injected directly into the myometrium And this one can be given rectally, per rectal. Now, uh, I just wanted to mention some important contraindications. By far, oxytocin is uh, the most commonly used, but the next two are also used. But methyl ergonavine should not be given in a woman who has high blood pressure, hypertension. And misoprostol should be avoided in a woman who has asthma. So remember those contraindications, very important. Now let's turn our attention to if a woman has a retained placenta, what would you do? And the answer is very obvious. You need to buy it, manually remove the placenta. And then finally, if there was trauma involved and that was the cause of the postpartum hemorrhage, then you need to repair any genital uh, lacerations that are associated. So now let's take a look at a picture here. And this is a, a nice diagram showing first a uncontracted uterus. Essentially the uterus uh, normally contracts and retracts but this has not happened because the uterine muscle essentially has lost its strength. So you have a situation of uterine atony. And then sometimes also uh, postpartum hemorrhage can happen because the placenta has not properly been expelled after delivery. So the placenta can sometimes be 
retained. And then the blood, as you can see here, collects inside and can then uh, come out um, in an episode of very heavy vaginal bleeding. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. You are a physician on an inpatient ward in a small community hospital. You are emergently called to the postpartum ward where a nurse alerts you that a 25-year-old woman who had a spontaneous vaginal delivery that morning became lightheaded and dizzy while getting up for the bathroom and is now found to have significant vaginal bleeding. The patient states that this is her third delivery and this has never happened before. She is in good health except for a history of severe asthma and has never had any surgery. You remember performing her delivery at which you inspected her vagina and cervix, which were both without laceration. You also distinctly remember checking the placenta, which was complete and intact. You see that she is sitting in approximately 300 cc's of blood and the nurse tells you that her pulse is 105. The most important next step is. Well, the very first thing, if you suspect postpartum hemorrhage, which is classically described in this clinical vignette, is you need to manually uh, help the uterus contract. And that can be done with a bimanual uterine massage. And then of course, once that's done, you can proceed with other um, management uh, options such as giving oxytocin, and then later, of course, checking a CBC. And finally, 24-year-old gravid of 4 para 2 with mild chronic hypertension and uncomplicated pregnancy has just delivered a vigorous male by spontaneous vaginal delivery. She is noted to have heavy vaginal bleeding and a bimanual exam reveals a soft, poorly contracted uterus. Her temperature is 98, blood pressure is 158 over 92, pulse is 105, and oxygen saturation 95% on room air. Which of the following uterotonic agents is contraindicated in the management of this patient's postpartum hemorrhage. Okay, well, oxytocin usually not, no real contraindications. Methylorganivine is contraindicated in women who have high blood pressure. Uh, misoprostol is contraindicated in patients that have asthma. And uh, in this patient, we have a situation where the blood pressure is high. So you do not want to give her methyl or gonavine.